Now we come to the Lindisfarne Gospels. And this is possibly one of the best known uh, illuminated manuscripts that we see coming out of Ireland. There's a notation that states that it was made in about 698. Uh, it also tells us that the bishop of the Church of Lindisfarne at the time, by the name of Edfrith, uh, wrote this book for God and St. Saint Saint Cuthbert. Please, please name a child Cuthbert. I mean, they're going to hate you for life, but you'll never forget their name. Anyway, moving on. So the first piece we're looking at is actually a carpet page uh, from the Lindisfarne Gospel, and this is a cross from an image of St. Matthew. Now, the carpet page uh, exists generally before the start of each gospel, just like in the Book of Doro, but here it's far more detailed. All the interlace is confined by borders in this case. It's all framed in individually. The knotwork confined within such borders seems to enhance the idea of movement, uh, giving us this feeling almost of snakes or other creatures moving. And if you look closer, you'll notice that they are all creatures. We have birds and some kind of quadruped, either a dog or a cat, uh, interlace throughout these images. And this knotwork can have a lot of meaning. This could be life intertwined. The idea that all life is implicitly connected in some way. If we take out one piece, the rest of it will collapse. It could also refer to the Trinity, since frequently you see three elements intertwined. Could be the harmony of life in the world, or a sense of dualism, because we also often see twos and fours. Uh, dualism is kind of a cross between their pagan tradition and Christianity. In pagan tradition, they kind of looked at things as two sides of a coin, this life and the other life. In Christianity, they see it as good and bad, heaven and hell, etc. They're taking the same images and the same ideas and simply interpreting them differently. Now, if we look at some of the details, you start to see, for example, that we are, in fact, looking at creatures. For example, here, uh, we clearly see the head of a bird uh, in this image. And that bird kind of goes back to a body, etc. Uh, elsewhere, we see this incredibly intricate, detailed work, and oftentimes, it takes almost having to draw one of these to find out that these are all animals and that each of these elements, for example, this very thin piece is probably a tail that's been stylized and moved around. Now, this can also help with meditation as you're looking. Remember, you're dealing with uh, hermit monks. And if they're looking at this and considering the words of St. Matthew, again, it kind of creates a meditative element that they can use uh, as they consider whatever question is on their mind. Now, across from this, we have St. Matthew. And this is a very different St. Matthew than what we saw at the Book of Doro. Here, they seem to be taking on some Greek and Roman classical forms. It's more three-dimensional, but yet it's very linear, uh, very simplified. St. Matthew here may well be based on a Mediterranean classical model. The figure behind the curtain is uncertain, but it's a classic juxtaposition of the Old and New Testament. The idea being that the Old Testament is closed and Matthew here is actively writing the New Testament with the angel above him uh, representing God speaking to him as he's writing the gospel itself. Now, the setting seems to be Mediterranean, and that makes a lot of sense because the Irish, the sources that they're using, many of them would have come from the Mediterranean and elsewhere through various trade routes. So it's not something that they would have been completely separated from. The fact that it's not three-dimensional is entirely stylistic. This sort of linear form is very similar to what we saw a minute ago 
uh, on the carpet page where we have this very linear motif. So they're simply transferring that to the human image, again making it incredibly linear. So it depicts the image in terms of line and color with no interest in modeling and perspective. And this is just a different concept of art. Now this brings us to the Book of Kells, the other incredibly famous uh, book of this period coming out of Ireland. And the Book of Kells is possibly produced on Ionia, Iona, an island off of Ireland. Say that three times fast. And its medieval name was the Gospel of Columkill, uh, St. Columba, Columba. And it's thought it was brought to Kells to save from plundering by the Vikings because the Vikings will be drawn to these monasteries since they frequently have a lot of goods. They acted as banks in many uh, areas in Ireland. And the monks tended not to be armed or fight back. So from a Viking perspective, really good target. Uh, an issue we'll get into shortly. This book was held in the same esteem as an ancient relic. Uh, it was the sort of thing that would have been thought to not necessarily guarantee you a victory in battle, but it would definitely be a helpful element. And what we're looking at is the Cairo page. So a Cairo, uh, and it's extremely stylized here, is an image like this, which basically is a symbol of Christianity. Uh, and this marks the first appearance of Jesus' name in the book of Matthew. We also see a lot of elements in here. For example, as we look at it now, it looks very busy. Uh, and very complex, but not that different from the carpet page. But as soon as we start looking at details, we start to see some interesting things. For example, here we have a human head uh, being represented. And they're doing this to beautify the word. This is their art in dedication to God. So that's why they're creating these illuminations. Uh, we also have a symbol which appears to be Adam and Eve over here. Uh, of course, Adam and Eve, uh, you go through a number of baguettes and you get to Jesus. We also have something else. We have cats and mice. Uh, here, very clear, we have two cats and four mice uh, standing in the area. These sketches, these Celtic pieces, the ancient ones, frequently have a lot of hidden narratives in them. Uh, stories that are key to, in this case, uh, Jesus' life or metaphors uh, for their specific understanding. Here, off on one side, we have a rat and fish on the right side, uh, along with our cats and mice. And this is meant to be an aesthetic display, uh, one for spiritual contemplation, almost, uh, or one that can act as a focus of meditation. Why the book of Matthew? Probably because this is the traditional Christmas gospel, so it becomes particularly important because this is the key to that major festival in Christianity, which is Christmas.